Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamu alaikum dear students Welcome to the YouTube channel of Multan Public School and College for Boys and Girls Today in the biology class of class O level we will study about lecture number 6 of chapter ecology You have already studied more than half of the chapter and hopefully you have understood each and every concept now let's study the last part of the chapter by the end of this video you will be able to describe and state the importance of carbon cycle and you should also be able to describe the nitrogen cycle in making nitrogen available for plants and animal protein also describe the role of mosquito as a vector of disease and then you should be able to describe the transmission and control of malarial pathogen. In the start, we will study about the biogeochemical cycles. The flow of the chemical elements between living organisms and the environment is known as biogeochemical cycles. There are many different types of biogeochemical cycles. Some important are carbon cycle, nitrogen cycle, sulfur cycle and water cycle carbon and nitrogen cycle are in our syllabus carbon is constantly being removed from and released into the environment in the form of carbon dioxide hence the carbon dioxide concentration in the environment remains relatively constant there are different processes which either remove carbon dioxide or the carbon dioxide is released into the environment during photosynthesis, green plants they absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and use it to manufacture carbohydrates, for example, glucose. That glucose is converted into other organic compounds like amino acids and proteins. When animals they feed on these green plants, that carbon compound of the plant they become the part of the animal body. Similarly, the uh, carbon in the case of the plants is also preserved in the fossil fuels such as uh, coal, natural gas and oil. Uh, how the carbon dioxide is added? When the living organisms respire, like when the animals are respiring, carbon dioxide is added into the atmosphere. When the plant respire, also the carbon dioxide is released into the environment. Similarly, when uh, the fossil fuel like natural gas or coal they are burnt uh, at that time as well carbon compounds those which were already present in the fossil fuel they were, are released into the environment as carbon dioxide let's see the carbon cycle in the aquatic environment as well now the carbon dioxide which is present in the oceans that it is also dissolved in the water in the oceans in the seas in the rivers so that carbon dioxide from the atmosphere it diffuses into that ocean and then it is utilized by the green plants which may be present in the rivers the lakes and the oceans and then that food material is eaten up by the fish and other creatures also it becomes uh, the marine deposit it is also preserved in corals and mollusks so when this aquatic biomass it respires that carbon dioxide is added to the atmosphere similarly when the animals die and it is decomposed then also it becomes the part of the air similarly the limestone and the dolomite which are present in the earth crust they are also the stores of carbon they along with the coal gas when they are burnt methane is produced that methane is uh, also a carbon compound and in this way it becomes the atmosphere carbon store the carbon cycle consists of the processes by which carbon dioxide is removed and restored to the atmosphere why we need to study the carbon cycle the carbon forms 18 percent of the living matter also the carbon enables energy to flow through the ecosystem it ensures a continuous supply of inorganic carbon dioxide 
for plants to carry out photosynthesis. Now let's study about the nitrogen cycle. All the natural cyclic processes in the course of which atmospheric nitrogen enters the soil and becomes the part of living organisms is termed as nitrogen cycle. Let's see, now we know that in the air nitrogen is present about 78%. So this uh, nitrogen, the atmospheric nitrogen cannot be utilized uh, by the green plants or by the animals. So this atmospheric nitrogen is converted by the nitrogen fixing bacteria in the root nodules of leguminous plants. Similarly, there are certain free living bacteria which fix the atmospheric nitrogen to ammonia. That ammonia is toxic compound but it is converted into less toxic compound nitrites by nitrifying bacteria. So this process is known as nitrification. So these nitrites are converted to nitrates and by nitrifying bacteria. These are also present in the soil. These nitrates are then absorbed by the green plants and then the plants make up their proteins. But here the problem arises when these nitrates they are acted upon by the denitrifying bacteria. These are also present in the soil and they convert these nitrates into the atmospheric nitrogen. So in this way uh, it is not utilized by the plants. Similarly when the animals they excrete or they digest. Uh, similarly when the animals excrete that also contains ammonia. So that is again the process goes on and when the animals and the plants they die they are decomposed by aerobic and anaerobic bacteria and fungi again it is converted into ammonia mines and again whole process is continued. Dear students uh, when you will see the la past papers you will see different type of nitrogen cycle diagrams. Now you see that the lightning fixation that is when there are thunderstorms at that time the atmospheric nitrogen is converted with the help of bacteria to ammonium compounds. So again those ammonium compounds are utilized okay? so, and the denitrifying bacteria they also convert the nitrates back to the atmospheric nitrogen and there may be nitric uh, oxides as well they are also formed. Same is the case when the fertilizers are added to the crops the run of water may be there so uh, some of the nitrogen is again removed and those fertilizers they are adding ammonium to the soil. If we have a look on the aquatic nitrogen cycle now those small aquatic creatures they are consumed by the fish and amphibians in a pond. Fish and amphibian waste is excreted directly and indirectly as ammonia which is toxic now these nitrosomonas bacteria they these nitrosomonas bacteria they convert ammonia into nitrites which is less toxic as compared to ammonia but still poisonous so this nitrite is again converted by some another bacteria another nitrobacter bacteria uh, into nitrates which are very less toxic but they are absorbed by the green plants as a source of their nutrient so the plants by utilizing the carbon dioxide and the uh, light energy of the sun they convert those nitrates into their proteins and the protein is consumed by the animals uh, the next topic is the understand the role of mosquito as a vector of disease so dear students that this mosquito all of you are familiar that not only causes malaria but many other diseases like dengue fever as well. So basically in our syllabus is malaria. So malaria is a serious and sometimes a fatal disease in many tropical countries. And a vector is an organism that carries disease causing organism that is the pathogen and transmits diseases. The cause of the malaria is a parasitic protozoan and the vector is the mosquito so be careful about the mosquito 
uh, the cause of malaria is basically the protozoan plasmodium which is a parasite uh, so the parasite can spread to humans through the bite of infected mosquito so this is the plasmodium in uh, human beings there are different types of plasmodium parasite but only five different types they cause malaria in humans about 300 million cases each year worldwide are reported regarding malaria and 9 of 10 cases these they occur in africa a person in africa dies of malaria every 10 seconds women and young children are most at risk so this malaria affects five times as many people as aids uh, leprosy measles and tuberculosis so that is the reason we study about malaria so let's see that how basically malaria is transmitted from one person to another now this is the vector mosquito so this is first infected mosquito which has plasmodium in it when this mosquito bites a healthy person he also becomes infected we can say that he is the first infected person so that plasmodium enters into the liver cells and then it infects the red blood cells those red blood cells they carry the plasmodium now if again this infected person gets a bite by a mosquito so this mosquito will bite another person and second person will be affected so in this way mosquito is transmitted uh, is transmitting uh, the plasmodium from one person to another uh, there are different symptoms of malaria for example high fever back pain profuse sweating uh, the person may develop dry cough uh, he will have fatigue and aches in the body uh, there are chills and sweating that is the person will be shivering and then there will be profuse sweating so uh, on the brain the effect is that the person will suffer from headaches the spleen may enlarge and uh, in the stomach since nausea vomiting and abdominal pains are there and the bloody stools uh, may be there as well so before we study how to control that malaria we need to study the life cycle of mosquito so this is an adult mosquito it lays eggs on the water surface these eggs after few days changed into the larva which is just under water surface and it can uh, respire through this particular area then after few days the larva changes to pupa so it again is present on the surface of water and from the pupa the adult emerges as you can see from this life cycle so what we need to control can you guess so first prevention of malaria is that this mosquito eradication yeah. first thing is drainage of wetlands preventing breeding around homes ddt sprays should be there and transgenic malaria resistant mosquito should be produced how we can prevent ourselves from mosquito bite nets use of nets in the home in the windows in the doors then certain anti malarial repellents should be applied in the form of creams as coils may be used as repellent sprays should be there anti malarial drugs to be taken and vaccine is under development we can control uh, malaria by destroying the mosquito breeding sites uh, clearing the stagnant water prevent mosquito bites using uh, nets for sleeping wear cover up clothing use insecticide spray on the skin uh, introduce predators of mosquito larvae for example uh, the guppy fish can be introduced into the ponds use insecticide to control populations of the mosquitoes use anti malarial drugs to prevent people being infected by the parasite most work by inhibiting enzymes in the parasite and prevent normal metabolism and reproduction hopefully dear students you have understood well 
also do the given assignment allah hafiz and stay blessed